Welcome to episode 59 of Talking Shirts. I'm Mike from Hulk AR Shirts and today we're going to take a look at the 2016 Home Shirt. So the 2016 Home Shirt was made by Fita. Um, it was the third and final year with those guys. They produced an all white shirt with a nice big broad red band going across the middle. Probably the, the most traditional, shall we say, look that we've seen over the years from, from Hulk AR. Uh, Brian Alfred was the main shirt sponsor. Uh, there was just that single season during 2016. Now taking a look at the shirt, almost everything uh, is, is dye sublimated onto here. So that includes the IRS sleeve, um, sleeve sponsors. They're not the sleeves, are they? That's the collar. The collar sponsors, we would normally expect to have seen them on the collar. I've covered that quite a bit through episodes 57 and 58. And again, here is now a different example of that collar sponsor dropping off the collar and onto sort of the upper shoulder. Um, some of the shirts have got the, the sponsor on an angle, but as you can see now, it's kind of at this area gone consistently straight. Maybe that's so that it's a little bit more visible. As I've said, it was produced by Fita. This is also dye sublimated, as well as the Malcolm West forklifts and the club crest over on the left side of the chest there. Brian Alfred is also dye sublimated in, and you'll be able to see here, we've got two rows of these grips now, nothing really in the middle, just a little bit down the side. It, 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 I'm really interested to know how much of a difference that that makes. But as a shirt collector, it's a really good telltale sign of whether a shirt has been match issued or whether it is just a replica. Um, especially in these days, it's been a long time now since we've not had those across the front of the shirt. I think it was possibly 2012. So yeah, especially for a modern day shirt, it's a really good telltale sign. You'll be able to see some reinforced stitching up here in the neck. So that's there to stop the shirt ripping. Again, another really good telltale sign that a shirt is match issued or match worn. Having a look on the side here, and we have a Kingston Press Cider sponsorship brand. This was a, a sponsorship agreement with the Super League. So this featured on all playing shirts across all clubs. This is a patch that has been heat applied. Looking at this one, there is another one underneath. So it's had a secondary one applied over which is a really good sign that this shirt has been worn, which I know it has, because I photo matched it to quite a few games, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. And then we've got the Outbox sponsor there that has been dye sublimated. Round to the other side, and you'll see here that we have got another patch. This time it is the Super League branding for the first utility Super League. As you can see under here, we have got another patch. So this is a secondary one that has been applied over it. So again, the other side has also been reapplied, as has this one. So that is a really, really good sign for me. And then we've also got the Yorkshire staffing services, and that has been dye sublimated. Quite like this. Right then, swinging it round to the back, and you can see that this shirt was worn by Dane Tills. So Dane Tills joined Rovers in the 2015 season. He actually joined us after the season had started. I think it was sort of March, maybe April time when he ended up making his debut for the club. Uh, he joined the club from the Canberra Raiders. Uh, he went on to make 48 appearances for Rovers, scoring three tries across those two seasons. Um, as I've said, he joined us from the Canberra Raiders, which was somewhere he'd been for the vast majority of his career. Uh, he made over 200 NRL appearances. So he came across with quite a, a big reputation, really. Um, Possibly somebody who never saw his best rugby played in East Hull. Um, but he was somebody who I thought was maybe just a, a little bit better than everybody else in terms of his ability. And maybe the players around him weren't necessarily always aware of what he was. Um, I, I really enjoyed watching watching Dane play. I think a few people called him Dane the Train. We, we used him as a, a battery and ran prop and I don't really think that was his, his game. I think he was much better much more of a ball handling prop somebody that could pass the ball and we just didn't quite get to see enough of that so yeah it's a shame especially obviously with the end of the 2016 season the way it went obviously did cut Dane's career with us that little bit short it would have been interesting to know had he have stayed if we had a you know won that million pound game but again all these questions and uh, we'll never know the answer so talking about the back of the shirt as we've got the Tilson 17 that's printed on the back of here uh, we've got the Aspire Academy, Joinery Depot, and the Hull College Group Sponsor. All of those are dye sublimated into the back of the shirt. 
you can make out here we've got the GPS pocket pop some close-up pictures so you can see that's where the GPS tracker just slots in the back of there and that is how the sports scientists get the data of how many meters a player has made and contact and things like that and we've also got some a reinforced stitching on the back here which has got some lovely pulls in it because this shirt has probably been run ragged so I've actually been able to photo match this shirt to five games throughout that season in 2016 the chances are it was probably warning more but I just haven't ever had the photographic evidence to back that up but to find five games it is very very good going I normally settle at one and once I found one I'm happy but every now and again something just crops up and I just keep finding the odd images some are easier to find than others and like I say I found to five games that this has been definitely warning one of the games that this was definitely warning was that million pound game defeat to Salford it's not really something that you should or want to brag about so I'm not going to talk about it too much but to know that that was quite a monumental moment in our history even though we were on the losing side it probably did shape the club into what it is now heading sort of midway through this this 2022 season if we didn't go down then we're probably not in the position that we're in now we may have it may have got worse if we'd have stayed up who knows so yeah to have one from the uh from that game yeah i'll, I'll take it i'll definitely will take it right so that is everything for episode 59 of talking shirts hope you've enjoyed watching this episode on the 2016 home shirt and listening to my opinions a little bit on Dean Tills. Um, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And also, if you would, check out my social media. So just make sure you're following those. I really do appreciate the support that I get. And thank you for everybody who does continue to watch episodes of Talking Shirts. Must be, you know, quite committed if you're in 59 episodes deep listening to, to me just talking about random cotton and polyester. I really do appreciate it. Check back in another couple of weeks and I'll be back with a special edition episode of Talking Shirts where I'm going to cover a shirt that not many people will have seen before, not in the form that I've got it. So yeah, leave you with that little Easter egg and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.